Hello all, I'm Sai and you're watching The Book Dragon. In today's video, I'm bringing to you some of my all-time favorite books. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Most of my favorite books actually uh, have to do something main with the character and not that much with the plot. But there are certain books which I like for the plot also because the characters are not that much developed but the plot of that book are uh, so engaging so I like them. And apart from this, there are also certain other factors which I'll be uh, talking about while I speak about the certain books. The first book is Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. Now in this book, just as I said before, the plot is not the main focus throughout. Uh, the main plot of the book is that we have a main character Aza and her friend who are trying to uh, find this missing millionaire so that they can get a huge reward. But that's not the main focus throughout the book. The main focus is that as a main character she's suffering from OCD and the effects on OCD on her are like so so huge and John Green just dives deep into the story and uh, makes us explore what all Aza feels while these uh, cloud of emotions and whirlpools of emotions that she focuses. Uh, it's not a sad ending, it's a nice ending to her story but uh, if you want to uh, learn something about OCD or how a person feels while he or she is suffering from OCD then you have to read Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. The next book is Simon vs The Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albert Ali. Now in this book we have a guy named Simon who's 15 years old and he's uh, gay but he's not out of the closet yet. So what happens is that uh, he's just been hiding this from everyone, not uh, showing it to anyone else. And what happens is that one day uh, he's been exchanging these uh, main emails with this other boy named Blue. And um, there's this other person named Martin who just finds it out and he blackmails uh, Simon that he'll uh, tell the truth to everyone uh, if he doesn't uh, budge to what all orders that he gives. And uh, Simon without any other way to get out of it he does certain things for martin what actually happens is that uh, martin leaks his uh, identity and the fear of simon is that uh, he might not be accepted by his uh, community or his society as a whole what happens then is that on the day of christmas uh, simon comes out and it's so sweet okay uh, if you want to uh, how to say if you're a homophobic person and if you want to uh, get that fear out of you then you have to read this book because this is the simplest uh, representation of LGBTQ books if you ask me yet it is so so powerful uh, if Simon's life is a huge cake I'm sure that this is the best slice of that cake you can eat and I think everyone needs to read this book the next one in the list is obviously Harry Potter by JK Rowling I'm holding the first book alone but I like the entire series as a whole uh, because it's uh, one of the uh, how to say these books are uh, one of the books which actually made me start reading a lot more and I read Harry Potter when I was in college okay so you can read it during any part of your life I'm sure that if, even if you read it when you're 80 or 90 you'll be able to appreciate uh, the series for what it is and on, one of the main things is that uh, though it has been over 10 years since the series is completed uh, it makes sense and it will make sense in the future also because uh, the main, there are only two main things on which the entire uh, series of Harry Potter stands on they are friendship and love okay love not in the sense of romantic love but love in general uh, love between people who are affectionate with each other and who want each other in their lives uh, it also tackles a lot of uh, dark things like death and uh, torture abuse and a lot of things um, all these things come together and there's also a lot of magic in it which will be liked by most people if you ask me uh, i think even if you don't read any of the books that i'm talking about in this video everyone needs to read these seven books because uh, you might like it or not like it, I'm not sure because it might not be the cup of tea for everyone but after reading Harry Potter you'll come out as a better person at least to a small extent that's what I think about the series The next one is a duology and I'm speaking about Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom both by Lee Bardugo Just as I said before, uh, there are certain books in this list that are, that are strong in the characters and strong in the plot but these two are equal, okay? Uh, the plot is as much important as the characters and vice versa uh, the best thing about this is that uh, we get the backstory of each and every uh, one of the main characters, okay? Uh, for example, if, even though we have seven books in Harry Potter, we don't get the backstory of each and every main character. Uh, we get the backstory of Harry throughout and the uh, backstory of Voldemort, but um, the backstories of Hermione and Ron, I want to uh, read them. Uh, how did they grow up until they were 10, 10 years old or until they were 11 years old? How was uh, Hermione's muggle life before she be uh, realized that she was a wizard? Uh, all those things I wanted to know but in these two books mm, until the point when they are 16 or 17 uh, as they are shown in the series everything that has happened in their uh, lives has been uh, just dictated by and uh, dictated and narrated by uh, Nipar Dugo in this beautiful narration and I'm sure that if you read these two books uh, 
I'm uh, I'm definitely sure that uh, they'll be one of the best books that I've read this year, this year. And I cannot stress you to read more of this because it's a bit darker compared to Six of Crows. Sorry, uh, Harry Potter. And I think even if you're an adult or a young adult, you will enjoy Six of Crows because the characters are so relatable and uh, not relatable, but their stories are so uh, pungent so that you'll fall in love with the world very easily. The next book is A Feast for Crows by George R. R. Martin. The reason why uh, of all the five books this is my most favorite in the series is because I have uh, two main characters whom I just love and adore throughout the series uh, the books as well as the shows uh, show and it is uh, they are uh, Daenerys Targaryen who is my most favorite of all the Game of Thrones characters and the next one is Tyrion Lannister the thing about this book is that we don't get the points of view of both Daenerys and Tyrion in this book also uh, as a fan favorite uh, Jon Snow is the uh, most loved character in the fandom of uh, Song of Ice and Fire or Game of Thrones and uh, even Jon Snow's point of view is not that in this series or uh, sorry in this book and yet uh, George R. R. Martin made a great uh, way of uh, carrying out the story without some of the main pivotal characters throughout the book uh, we actually see a lot of Cersei in this one and we understand how crazy Cersei is and uh, we see uh, her dark as well as her light side uh, light side she has a huge dark side as we all know and a small uh, chunk of her is light uh, which is like so true and so loyal and so good uh, we see to uh, sorry we get to see that small portion of Cersei also I liked that in this book and uh, the main fact is that only I I don't have my two main characters in this story yet uh, it pulled out to be one of my favorites uh, that's the thing which uh, makes this book stand out for me next book is Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. Now this is the second book in the Hunger Games trilogy and uh, <clears throat> the thing which I liked about this book is the plot, okay? There's not that much of a great character development or anything. We get new characters from the second book and also in the third book but uh, there's not that much of a development if you ask me when it comes to the Hunger Games. Um, the thing about this book is that the first book, Hunger Games, it laid out this, uh, how to say, gruesome world and uh, this, how to say, sick competition which we all were uh, enjoying while reading it and at the end it was a happy ending and from that happy ending itself it was made clear that okay you got what you asked for but uh, you're going to suffer for that in the uh, next book and cat suffers a lot in this book and that is so so good okay the media <clears throat> how they act that's put into focus and how when a person tries to overpower the media and uh, project themselves bigger uh, it ends up in such a mess in their life uh, that was really beautiful as well as the plot of this book I, I can say that uh, Catching Fire is the perfect name for this book because it, it just catches fire and uh, it doesn't uh, stop at all until the story ends I just love this for that especially the ending uh, just a spoiler okay um, if you're not uh, read The Hunger Games so sorry because you have to read it and enjoy it uh, I'm sure that those who are reading YA nowadays uh, are reading it due to one of these two series either The Hunger Games or Twilight I've not read Twilight so I cannot speak about that but The Hunger Games I'm sure that um, if you want to read more books go read The Hunger Games because it will uh, compel you to read more the next one is Animal Farm by George Orwell this is the only classic that I've included uh, of all the 10 books okay uh, the thing about this book is actually the idea which I liked okay uh, Animal stalking, it's normally not uh, adults enjoy or uh, even young adults enjoy. It's a thing for children if you ask me. But uh, George Orwell, he has used that uh, concept in which animals speak and they overpower human beings and establish a society of their own. But even in such a society, how can certain things that, uh, that are so evil in the human society also can uh, blossom and uh, kind of destroy everything that was created by the animals that was so good. Uh, it's political okay uh, that's the main thing I don't usually like stories that deal with a lot of politics because I don't like uh, reading such stories but in this one it was so so good it's even not that big okay you, you can just sit down and read it within two hours and I'm sure that um, you can enjoy this a lot that's a lot of uh, how to say there are like various perspectives from which you can uh, read this book that's the best thing if you ask me about this one the next one is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn this is the only thriller in this list and uh, I think this is one of the first thrillers which I've read and I just loved it a lot okay anyone who's read Gone Girl I've not at all uh, heard them complaining about the book or uh, saying that they didn't like it because it's a very well written story it is huge okay and I'd suggest you not to read this book if you're having a bad time because you will you should be in this uh, very good state of mind while reading the book because it has certain triggering content but um, the way in which Gillian Flynn has executed it uh, she's not even left a small strand of hair for you to uh, go through and investigate and 
find faults in the story because it is so so well written it is so uh, uh, how to say it's researched and laid out in a proper way so that um, how to say while uh, reading the story itself you'll be uh, plotting certain things what if this is found and uh, what uh, what if this is used to find what uh, uh, sorry who did the murder and such stuff like that but everything she lays out certain clues in the beginning and she herself destroys those clues in the perfect way and it's just so master masterfully done guys you have to read gone girl because it'll just keep you on the edge of your seat and it'll make you read more actually this is one of those books which uh, encouraged me to read more because this is a chunker okay it's over 500 pages and i just sat down and did this within like two or three days which is like so quick for me during the time when I read this and it just made me read a lot more that's why I like this book a lot the last two books in this list are actually new favorites so you might have heard me uh, talking about the, these books a lot many times this year and the first one is Sita Warrior of Mithila by Amish Tripathi okay uh, the thing about this book is how Sita has been characterized and how her story has been told in an elegant way okay uh, it's not made in such a way that it uh, how to say brings down the tone of any other character even the villain he's not made uh, to seem negative in this book as well as uh, ram though uh, ram is the main avatar uh, of this series uh, how much uh, important is the role of sita and how her life was from she were uh, from the time when she was born to when she uh, how she is right now and also uh, there's this incredible twist at the end of ravan that links that story with this one uh, i'd suggest you to read sita first then you can read either Ram or Ravan, it's not a problem. But I think when you read the series, you have to read this one first because it's the best of all the three. And uh, I just had a very good time uh, reading this. And it's also a part of the story which I knew. So part of the story which I don't know, didn't know also. So it was um, kind of fun. Uh, there are certain things which uh, I expected to play out in certain ways, which they did. And also certain things which I didn't even know existed in the story. And it was just a good time reading this book. The last one is this is going to hurt by Adam K. Uh, if you've been following me, you know how much I like this book and how much I've talked about this book. I even have a dedicated review for this one. Uh, I'll try to uh, link up all the uh, reviews if I have them in the description so you can check them out if you want to because uh, all the books that I've spoken about, they are so incredibly great if you ask me and uh, they are all good fun. Okay, you, there's not even single book in this uh, see, uh, in the books that I've spoken about that you'll be able to put them down because they're all awesome the special thing about this one is that it's non-fiction okay it's non-fiction it's reality the real life of a person uh how taking up a career as a doctor can be like uh, a trauma that's expanded for a lifetime that was shown really good in this book and it has made me respect uh, doctors a lot more i think everyone needs to read one uh, read this one when you become an adult because there are certain graphic things in this one which uh, young readers might uh, feel, uh, feel so uncomfortable to read. Uh, I think it's best suitable for uh, adults and everyone needs to read this because doctors uh, require the understanding which has been given in this book that every, every person needs to read and understand. That's all for today and if you did enjoy watching this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends. If you want to get more content from me do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.